Love you. I was really fucking sick. Like, it was really bad. Like, I haven't... It was my first time getting COVID. So, like, I literally avoided it for four years until now. And I don't know how I got it or who I got it from, but it was hell. I'm I'm an asthmatic, so, like, I think it was, like, particularly shitty. And if I blow my nose or cough, I apologize in advance. Um, like, have an <laughs> asthma attack? Yeah, or if I have an asthma attack and I, like, need a... I literally have this next to me just in case. Jesus Christ. Well, I'm glad you're back. We missed you. Two weeks without Mira. I mean, Two it was weeks a, without Mira. It was a uh, How did you guys survive? Yeah, exactly. It, was a it torturous must have process. been awful. I'm so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so a lot, has been, uh, a lot has been happening. I mean, it, like, you know, we missed two weeks of the world. I feel like the news cycle is so crazy and the celebrity news cycle never stops and I have no I, idea what's going on in like for once in my life in pop culture, really, because I've been so sick. Yeah, but I, I mean, I guess we don't do politics on this show uh, as a kind of general rule. But I feel like this particular week, because it has been such a big story the past 24 hours, we're recording this early in the week, uh, is the fact that Joe Biden dropped out and... Kamala kind of Harris. Escape that story. Yeah. How are we gonna how are we not gonna talk? And I think that there is a pretty wide range of <laughs> of uh public celebrity reactions to Biden dropping out. I think that's already becoming a thing, right? There's like star because I feel like now we live in an era where like celebrities endorse or like George Clooney writes a public like op ed. And, this is know. all George Clooney's fault, by the way. <laughs> I blame him 100%. Yeah, I mean, like, I'm of two minds on this, where it's like, shut the fuck up, what do you know? But then also, like, you're a public citizen, you can, if you want to weigh in, I guess they have a, do they just have a high public profile, so they're a little, like, essays I get... Like, there's a lot, like, I understand that, like, George Clooney is married to a human rights lawyer, so that might be, like, a an exception, but, like, I've gotten to the point where, generally speaking, I kind of just want celebrities to shut the fuck up. It's like, okay, like, you're a rich person, primarily, and so your politics are going to be that of a rich person, ideally, like, the best politics that a rich person could have, but, like, that's it, and I don't need to hear it. Like, I don't want Taylor Swift to endorse anybody. I don't want any people, like, I, I want everyone to, like, keep their hands off of, like, the stuff that I enjoy. <laughs> you don't want Taylor Swift to endorse anyone. You and don't she's want not her. going to. You don't think she's going to join the K-Hive? No. I mean, maybe in the very last minute, but, like, I don't think so. Because, like, her fans, now that they're, now that she's got, like, Gen Z in there, are, like, surprisingly left. And, like, it's been pushing her whole fan base further and further left. And, like, that doesn't mean that there aren't also, like, Republicans and, like, conservatives, but... I think that primarily she's a capitalist and like endorsing Kamala Harris, like doesn't do for her what it did like four years ago. I think it does nothing but kind of take away from her fan base potentially. Like, I think she's not going to do it. You think that she will not just. I think she'll put, say her vote. That's what you think she'll say. I was going to say, don't you think that she might have some principles and some. For sure. You know, like real convictions that would supersede like whatever capitalist interest she has. If you've watched Miss Americana, that's what the movie's about. But since then it's like, she's on tour. She's doing all this. Like I, she, she'll say go vote. I think that's about as far as she's going to go. Interesting. So what is happening in the world of celebrity with respect to this news? Like, do we have a consensus? Is there, are there people who are unhappy about it? What, what's going on? I think everyone's gone completely insane from what I can tell. It's like my whole timeline is like the coconut, the fucking living in the context of whatever. Like, I'm like, what the fuck? Like, I just had COVID for two weeks and entered into like the most insane timeline I possibly could. Like, what the fuck is happening? <laughs> yeah, it's been intense. And I feel like yesterday, like we're recording on Monday. Sunday was the announcement. And I just feel like social media just blew up yesterday with responses and like hey geography I mean, and i mean it just gets very when some very big news breaks people. it gets very weird <laughs> yeah it gets weird and like everyone's getting weird and it's like i see people like too angry about what's going on and then too excited about what's going on and then like a couple people who are kind of reasonable but then veer into like really unreasonable territory and it's like i at this point i'm just like all right i don't know everything's a mess everyone's fucked 
Well, uh, I don't let's know. see here. I'm, I'm looking at rea reactions like George Takei, the Star Trek actor. Yeah. I, I love George Takei. He's a sweet man. He's, a, he's like. He's a sex pest. Is he? Uh huh. Oh, well, shit. See, this is the problem. <laughs> I like people, and then I find out who's he a sex pest to. He sees like a teenage uh, male model. Oh boy! Yeah. Well, so uh, does that mean like, I can't read his? Can I? Can I not read his response? Read. You can still read his response. You won't be canceled. Nobody cancel Brad. Okay, he says, "quote I want to honor our president Joe Biden. He has served our nation admirably for decades. He is a decent, honorable man, a hugely successful president." and a patriot. Now, let us unite behind Kamala Harris and defeat Donald Trump in November. All right. I, I just made like some of the most unattractive facial expressions I think I've ever made in response to that. Like Biden is a fucking, he fucking RBG did. He just fucking like stayed in until he was too fucking old and it's too fucking late. And now we're all fucked. <laughs> like, Jesus Christ. Like, can you just like have a stroke and leave us all alone? Sorry. I don't really mean that. FBI. Do you think uh, do you think we're fucked still? Like we, there's no hope. Yeah, I don't think there's there's never been any hope, and I think that life is. Good. <laughs> I think that these news things have gotten a lot easier for me now that I've released the possibility of there being any hope. Now I'm just a uh, I'm just observing. Now I'm like, all right, we're fucked. Oh but here I am. <laughs> here you are, uh, little not little. Oh, I'm sorry, Lil Nas X. I like him. Uh, commented on Biden's Instagram post with, quote, wow, it's really Jover. <laughs> so Jover is, I swear to God, a word that was invented by Swifties to refer to her breaking up with Joe Alwyn. And now, again, we're in the most stupid timeline in which it is now being used to refer to, like, the president dropping out of the race because he's too old. I did not know this. It, a lot of people don't. Because it's just part of the lexicon now. Donald Trump on Truth Social uh, says, quote, crooked Joe Biden was not fit to run for president and certainly not fit to serve and never was. And that's just true. His, his usual. He's bluster. a piece of shit. And I hope he dies. But like, yeah, that is true. He never should have run. I mean, like what? What is shocking me and like confusing me is people who are like Biden's team, like, like carefully hid all of his like mental issues from us until it was too late he hid them from who he's been fucking confused for a really long time we all knew it like they didn't hide it they just ran him anyways like <laughs> i don't think it's too late i think there's time and i think people are excited uh to have new like life in the party and just to have like somebody who can communicate more clearly and more forcefully I mean, it's like everybody was mad at me for saying I'm not voting Joe Biden because I live in California and it doesn't make a difference. But then even Joe Biden didn't want me to vote for Joe Biden. So, <laughs> uh, Mark Hamill, the Luke Skywalker of uh, Star Wars, oh, yeah. fame, says, I saw him quote, at Starbucks once. You what? I saw him at Starbucks once. Oh, you did? Did you say something to him? No, I just saw him and I was like, oh, that's a nice looking Mark Hamill. There he is. There he is. Uh, quote, Joe Biden has a record of accomplishments unmatched by any president in our what, lifetime. What, Clarence Thomas in the fucking Supreme Court? I, <laughs> he restored I mean, what the fuck? Like, what has he done? Like, he's gone up there and he's been like corn pop fucking with the razor blades. Like, what? What, <laughs> what are you what talking about? Corn pop? You don't remember corn pop? No. What the fuck? Biden, like, was at, like, I think it was maybe when he announced his campaign four years ago. He was like... I used to come to the public pool and then there was this guy named Corn Pop and he would put his razor blades in the water and get them rusty and then I would have a chain and we would fight. It was like the weirdest fucking thing <laughs> anyone's ever heard. And this was like five years ago. Oh my God. Uh, so he says, Mark Hamill, uh, Joe Biden has a record of accomplishments unmatched by any president in our lifetime. He restored honesty, dignity, and integrity to the office after four years of lies, crime, scandal, and chaos. I mean, sure, four years of lies, crime, scandal, chaos, that's right. But dig dignity, is that what he said? Yeah, dignity and integrity and honesty. I don't... <laughs> I mean, did Biden really leave with dignity or did he leave in like a Twitter screenshot after getting a deathly illness? <laughs> Joe Biden, quote, Joe Biden will go down in history, says Barbara Streisand, as a man who accomplished significant achievements in his four-year term. We should be grateful for his upholding of our democracy. 
He's he's not upholding it very well. He's kind of fucking with it, actually. This has never happened before. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, I will say. I mean, Kamala's it, better. I'm glad that she's there instead of Biden. And she can speak. That's like good. <laughs> and like, like, just to draw a contrast, like almost no politician, certainly no president, willingly gives up power, like voluntarily gives up power, especially in this day and age where like Dianne Feinstein is like, truly like dead i mean like 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 completely incapacitated in office no she died she died right okay thank yeah, god yeah but i mean it was like the point is like and you know i don't mean to stomp on anybody's grave but like she was way incapacitated you know, yeah i know you will she <laughs> uh she was not right she was not physically or mentally right to be in no. public office and, and neither I, is biden you know that's i mean that's what we all know now and have known for a minute it's the fact that it's depressing that we are all, myself included, so relieved to just have somebody who can say whole sentences. Like, yeah. that is a huge relief. And, like, that is so depressing. Like, that's, like, the bar is on the ground. Like, <laughs> like Well, I think that, I think that, you know, you kind of saw this psychodrama play out on social media where, like, the super hardcore Biden stands were, like, really upset that everybody was, like, quote, unquote, stabbing him in the back after a quote, bad debate. And like, what I always said was, <clears throat> or what I would say is like, that wasn't a bad debate. That was like a mental collapse on national TV by yeah, somebody correct. who's like up in age and like, that was basically a stroke. I don't know what the fuck that was. That was yeah, like I mean, fucking it, hemorrhage in his brain. That was like a medical take him to the hospital after this kind of like, we couldn't give him Adderall cause I'll die kind of situation. <laughs> yeah. And so then people say, well, like, you know, this is how he always is. He's completely, shot mentally and not in control of him of his faculties and whatnot and he what shouldn't I, have been the president like what no the no no but i disagree with that like what i think is that he goes in and out like people do when they get up in age and he He's has like plenty of yeah i know but he has like most hours of the day he has his faculties 10 to easily. 7 um but that's what I, he said 10 to 7 yeah, and I think like too, like he was probably a little under the weight, which makes it worse. And it was a nine p.m. debate, which makes it worse. Which oh, that is so far. That is so late. I, oh my god, that is so far past bedtime. Listen, I will say in, in his defense, <laughs> if I had to debate on national TV at nine o'clock, I probably wouldn't be at my best. I'm old and I get tired easily. So yeah, there's. I mean, you're not you're not the president, so that's that might be why. <laughs> so John Stewart of uh, the Daily Show simply posted, "Quote legend." What? <laughs> I don't know. I guess he considers him a legend for stepping down. Like Biden like went on TV and shat himself and everyone's like like yes, congratulations Biden. You did so well. Like what the fuck? Like this is an emergency situation that like we're all making the best of. We're all doing our best here. Like it's it's Do you think that Biden stepped down willingly? Or do you think that he was kind of forced by the White House? Cuz it seems to me that No one could force him. I mean, no one. Well, there was all those news reports going around saying none of the White House staff, even like close staff, knew that he was gonna resign. That's because he didn't. That's because he didn't want there to be leaks. So he held the he held it close to the vest until like a minute before he posted it online. Because why did he wait so long? I feel like that's like uh, it's it's like yeah, I feel like he's it, what people who get dementia like that can also often get like angry and stubborn and agitated. And like I would bet it was something like that where he was like getting so angry and stubborn and agitated that like they couldn't like get the message out until he was like asleep or something like that. I think uh, it's like, you know what I keep, t I keep comparing it to like uh, the Lord of the Rings, like Frodo with the ring. You know how people get crazy around that ring. That's how power corrupts. Absolutely. That's what I mean. And so like the fact that he was in the end able to relinquish the ring is to his credit because not like Donald Trump certainly wouldn't do that. That motherfucker. What is wrong with old people who want to keep like it's like, why do you want to keep working? If somebody was like, you should retire, I'd be like, fucking great. Let's get the fuck out of here. I'm gonna go hang out with my son and wife and not do shit. Like, why why? I mean, I think why? I think they just it's that like go to sleep. Yeah, go to like go rest in Rehoboth or whatever yeah. at your beach house. But I think that's just the the power and the prestige. And uh, honestly, like that's his career. That's his life is to be in public service. And that's the pinnacle of public service. It's hard to walk away from it. And I think too, like on a human level, psychologically for his family and for him, like this fear that like, if I resign or if I don't run for reelection, Hunter's going to jail. Well, 
I'm going to, or I'm going to croak. Cause like my mission to be alive, to serve. And you know what I'm saying? Like you lose your edge when you retire. Oh, yeah. And so, I mean, he's going to croak for sure. Like probably pretty soon. He, he might already be dead. I don't think he's dead, but <laughs> you know, anyway, let's, uh, let's see. Cardi B, <laughs> Cardi B. I love her takes on everything. She's smart about politics. Shared excitement over the possibility that Kamala Harris might be on the ballot. Quote, ah, ha, 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 ha. Let's go. This is it. By the way, this is in all caps. Ah, ha, 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 ha. Let's go. I told y'all Kamala was supposed to be the 2024 candidate. Stop fucking playing with me. Stop fucking playing with her. Yeah. Do all along. By the way, I saw that, uh, what was it, 44,000 black women got on a Zoom. Wait, what is this? Like, how can, like, the story is that 40,000 black women were on a Zoom call to, I guess, organize for Kamala Harris. But, like, how can you be on a 40,000 person Zoom call and get anything done? Like, how does that work? Like, what is happening? Well, you just have, like, the leaders, like, the leaders of the movement who are, like, basically giving marching orders to this you know, so it's like a speech. Someone's giving a speech. Someone's leading the call and then all the 44,000 people are listening and they're giving them directives in terms of like who to contact next in their local areas or states to get involved on the ground. And like that's that to me is incredible. And that's good. 44,000 black women like on day one saying I'm signing up to hit the ground for this candidate. If I'm Trump, I'm thinking, oh shit. But that's just me. The one thing that maybe the only thing that like makes me feel like maybe 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 she has a chance although i don't i don't think she does sadly but maybe is that like trump didn't give her a very funny nickname laughing kamala that's not very good like he's like like compared to meatball ron it's like nothing it's crap or feeble joe i think like yeah or feeble joe that's a good well, one because sleepy joe never really stuck and he had used Sleepy on other people, yeah. but like after the debate, he started calling him Feeble Joe, and I was like, "Oh fuck!" Because that's the Feeble Joe was good. That's the word, right? Exactly. Yeah. So that's a that's a good name. That's Meeple Ron level. But laughing Kamala, like when he said Kamala Harris is strange, she's always rhyming when she talks. Like that was pretty funny. But like he's kind of lost his touch since then. <laughs> See, I think maybe I'm deluded, but I think she's gonna. I think she's gonna whoop him. I think she's gonna win. I um, admire your endlessly hopeful attitude yeah. and I would love to adopt it myself uh, one day, <laughs> but it's not going to happen. All right. All right. So let's see. Uh, Ariana Grande. Is that how you pronounce her name? Ariana Grande or Ariana Grande? Did you just ask me how to pronounce Ariana Grande? Uh, Holy shit, Brad. I don't know how to pronounce her name, but she showed support by resharing Biden's post endorsing <laughs> So she like retweeted him essentially. Uh, and then Russell Brand, who's a strange, oh, God. he's a weird fellow, but uh, he's a fucking rapist nightmare, man. Yeah, he's a, yeah, he's, he's, and he's gone into this weirdo, like spiritualist kind of like uh, cult leader. That's what happens to dudes who like get canceled and can't take it? They're like, now I'm religious. Yeah. He says, quote, Joe Biden has endorsed Kamala Harris for the Democratic nomination after ending reelection bid. We're in a wild world, mate. Wow, thanks, Russell Brand. I'm glad you posted that. Like, what? Like, why can't people just? And I understand this is ironic, like coming from me, but like, can people just like not post? Like, I just like think there's like a historically insane thing happening right now. None of us know what's going on. Everybody's confused, and yet every single tweet I see is like, "Here's what's going on. This is what's happening. I'm not confused. Everyone get on board." It's like we're all confused. Everyone's confused. We can admit that. <laughs> yeah. I mean, and like, you don't need to weigh in on every fucking yeah. thing. Like, it's not like we, ne we yeah. need your official statement. Especially like as a fucking like celebrity, it's like, I don't really need to know what like Russell Brand or Ariana Grande thinks exactly. <laughs> but like, it's just not that necessary. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I guess they're citizens or maybe like at least Ariana Grande is a citizen. I don't think Russell Brand is, but maybe he is, but. No, he's fucking. This is this this has been confusing me. Russell Brand is not American. Charlie XCX tweeted. Do you, do you, okay, wait, do you want to know something funny? I, I have no idea who Charlie XCX is. Yeah, um, I I assumed as much. I would be shocked if you knew who that was. Oh, good. Uh, so she came out with an album this year or like a month ago or something called Brat, 
and like people have really liked it and everyone's saying like it's brat summer like that's like if you see like a lime green anything and everyone's like brat summer it's because like the cover is just lime green with like like a shitty text that says brat on it and so then Charlie XTX tweeted like as soon as Kamala announced or Biden announced he was dropping out or whatever was like Kamala is brat and Charlie XTX is British she can't vote here she's not American and yet she's like Kamala is brat like who who paid her? Like what? Like did you do it for free? Like what the fuck? I don't know. I mean, I get, but I guess that's good for Kamala's cause, right? Because all these young kids are like, she's brat. You want to hear something funny? I saw that meme on. I think it was like a picture of. Remember uh, in the talented Mr. Ripley, how there's that scene on the beach where Matt Damon is like wearing like essentially like a nineteen whatever nineteen. 20s or 30 whatever time period that movie is set in like a, a yeah. bathing suit that's sort of like a speedo yeah and somebody had written or had posted like the word uh brat across like the front of his bathing suit and i thought because it's a green bathing suit yeah and i thought it was uh i thought they meant to say brat like it was a, a phallic reference <laughs> i thought <laughs> i grew up in milwaukee we ate bratwurst all the time i was like brat everyone's saying brat like it's bratwurst summer. I wonder if like, if it weren't for this episode, if you would have just gone on like for months, maybe years thinking that that's exactly what it was. I would have died thinking that it was brat. I had no idea. <laughs> that's really insane. So that that's where your head went. But Charlie XCX, whoever that is, is in favor of Kamala. Yeah. She said Kamala is brat. And like, it's just like, so like, she hasn't really... I don't think weighed in on politics very much at all. She just kind of like makes music for people on cocaine, which like more power to her. That's great. I've liked some Charlie XCX songs, but like saying Kamala is Brad, like no matter what you think is a good way to make sure that like your album does not stand the test of time. Do you really? <laughs> like imagine if she was like Hillary Clinton is Brad. Like we'd look at that now and be like, that's like pretty humiliating. <laughs> I don't think, I mean, this stuff is also disposable. Like, I don't think anyone's going to even yeah, remember. Yeah, it's disposable, but your album shouldn't be. So, like, why connect it to politicians who, like, may or may not do things that you hate? Like, I, what's the point? Sharon Stone, uh, the actress, pr quote, practically showered her feed, I'm assuming, like, her Instagram feed, with, re oh, with, with reposts of calls for Kamala to be supported posting an endless carousel of images to her Instagram stories in celebration. She should show her vagina if she really means it. That's right. And with the word, like, does the word brat or broad uh, apply here or no? <laughs> I mean, I guess it could apply if she's wearing like a green dress. I, <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know. <laughs> I was friends with Sharon Stone's nephew in high school, uh, Colin. He was a nice kid. I saw uh, Sharon Stone. Remember, we have a, a standing rule on this show that if we talk about a celebrity and you and I who live in Los Angeles have ever seen this celebrity in the wild, we're, we're under a moral obligation to divulge. I have not only seen Sharon Stone, but I have met her and I've spent a significant amount of time at her house with oh, her nephew. She, oh, really? Is she nice? Yeah, really nice. Yeah. Really nice lady. I mean, she was just like my friend's mom, kind of. Like, I didn't really know exactly who she was, but she was always super nice. Yeah, she, I mean, she wasn't his mom, but she kind of raised him. I think uh, she's probably, I mean, she comes from hard scrabble, like Pennsylvania, blue collar <laughs> roots. Like, I have a feeling she's she? she's probably down to earth. I j yeah, she was always like super cool and like nice to us. Like, she was like, it was a nice place to hang out. She, uh, one time I was walking my dog in West Hollywood. And I was walking past, uh, you know, that restaurant Hugo's, it's like a brunch spot yeah. in like WeHo. And I looked in the window and she was crying. She was sitting in a booth across from a guy and she was like really upset about something. He was crying. And I was like, oh my God, I just saw Sharon. Imagine being a celebrity and going through a breakup in public. That's wild. I think it was maybe her and like one of her like BFFs or something, like having a chat. I have no was idea. Was it a dude? It was a dude. Oh, like maybe they were like going over something sad, like, and she was crying about that. Like it wasn't like a fight necessarily. Yeah. I was like pure speculation, but I was just like, oh my God, like I just saw Sharon Stone, like having a That's wild. sad moment. So 
Yeah. She's on board the, uh, or like on board the K hive or she's in the K hive. Is that the way you put it? Yeah, I guess it, she's part of the K hive. She's a member of the K hive. She's Sharon Stone. <laughs> All right. It's like, it's like, what is this supposed to do for me? Like, I'm like, okay, Shonda Rhimes endorsed Kamala. Like, I, does that change anyone's mind? Uh, I, you know, like, doesn't really do much. I think these are little drops in the river, right? It's like, uh, right. it's like in the, like, for Shonda Rhimes, she might have like 10,000 people who follow her on social media who actually do put real stock in what her opinions are or just are such super fans of hers that they want to align themselves. I think it like, you know, it can have some small impact, but when you add up the collective impact of lots of celebrities endorsing one way or the other, then I think it, you know, it does have a mathematical impact. It doesn't have a zero impact, but I don't think it has some, yeah. some like massive, like. Right. I don't think it's zero. I think that's right. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's not a lot but it's not zero. I don't know, man. It's like, it, they just don't need to weigh in. Like if I were a celebrity, I wouldn't do it. Yeah. Actually, I probably would. I'm pretty mouthy. Yeah. I mean, I think it's okay to like share your opinion in a tweet. I think like writing a New York times op-ed as if you're like some sort of like states that aaron sorkin fucking op i was like what the fuck are you like doing like what like mitt aaron sorkin wrote an op-ed in which he said that mitt romney should be the democratic nominee and it's like what yeah dude like what is aaron sorkin on like is he like on cocaine like i was like yes he is but like where is he getting it and like why is it so good and could you like give me the number of his dealer because what the fuck yeah i don't know and i feel like these publications it, we live in such a clickbait and like attention economy like shame on the new york times for publishing that like who i mean i guess like aaron sorkin made the west wing or whatever so like he's got some political insider whatever you know but like i just feel like george clooney publishing in the new york times like opinion column like aren't you sort of sullying yourself because you know it's going to get clicks that's all they care about it's like oh yeah we'll publish this shit by a celebrity and it's going to get yeah. people's eyeballs on the new york times so i mean aaron sorkin's op-ed was even dumber like i if i were an editor at the new york times i'd be like okay the george clooney one's all right like aaron sorkin what the fuck like <laughs> what is wrong with you yeah i don't know i mean it's like yeah just pub it put it on your sub stack like every other jackass like don't go to like the paper of record and assume that like you your opinion needs to be like put in the spotlight in some way i, I don't know but uh Aaron's me off. let's make predictions you think kamala's gonna lose right we're fucked we're headed into the abyss yeah i think i'm hopeful i think kamala is gonna get people excited i think people i mean trump getting shot i think we might be fucked i think that people uh are so i think most people are just so relieved like the way that i kept phrasing it was like oh my god like if biden stays in this race it's going to be like watching an 81 year old man on a tightrope, like walking a tightrope, like a hundred feet off the ground for the next four months. And he can't have a false move. There's no net. Yeah. And like, I, you know, like I was like, I can't do this. Like, this is so stressful watching this motherfucker, like try to like make a speech like, and it's not like, you know, I mean, just let's be real. Uh, the stammer fine. Like, I don't mean denigrate anybody who's got any kind of like, stutter you know what i'm sorry i i i'm not ableist to be very clear but if you're the president of the united states i actually don't think it's crazy to have a stutter be something that stops you from being a president like it shouldn't stop you from doing anything else but like the president is the highest job in the land and a lot of it involves talking in a way that people can understand so if you stutter maybe pick a different job. Like, it's just like, that's the president. Well, it's the literal president. And I mean, it, like it was, other job. it was not like the stutter, I think in his older age became more of an issue than it was for him throughout most he of his didn't stutter when he was young. Yeah. If you watch videos of him, he was now, he did not stutter. Yes. I never saw one. I think it just, it's all tied together. But, uh, so I think most people, I would say a majority of people are just in that camp where it's like, whew, like now we can like at least have somebody who can stand up and make a, make a forceful case yeah. loudly without coughing and without like 
you know, misusing names constantly and like, you know, the whole thing. The bar is just on the ground. <laughs> We're like, oh, the president can talk? Like, fuck yeah. <laughs> yeah. So we'll see how it goes. But I'm I, I'm hopeful. I'm hopeful. And I think people are super energized. And I, th I mean, they've raised like, I think like while we're talking, it just crossed a hundred million dollars in 24 hours. Jesus fucking Christ. So that's crazy. People, I mean, that I think that's just like a collective sigh of relief. Like here, please take my money. Thank you for making this shit show end, you know, but. Man, she cannot take my money. And if you want to donate to Kamala Harris, you should donate to Mira Gonzalez instead. <laughs> Uh, yeah, Mira, like, what is your PayPal address, Mira? We'll get you some money, hopefully. MiraLGonzalez at gmail.com. Or there's also my Venmo, which is just Mira Gonzalez. Right. Or there's my Cash App, which is MiraGons420. You can donate to the Mira Gonzalez campaign. Right. I am a write-in candidate. <laughs> I am actively running. I do not have a platform. I am tired. There you go. I am tired is her actual campaign slogan. <laughs> That's right. Uh, it's a it, honestly what else is going on in the news mira what else do we need to consider today well let's see i've been um sick and dying so i have not seen a lot of news weirdly for like the first time in my life but um uh the hawk oh more okay brad loves the hawk to a girl and has a deep sense of concern for her life and her career I'm, so we're following I'm following the trajectory of her career with the interest. And he plans to become a philanthropist and give pizza to the homeless? Is that right? <laughs> I mean, you know, it, it, I think uh, I think so. I think she is maybe like self-aware enough to realize that it's a 15 minutes of fame type thing and she's trying to at least do some good with it, maybe. Uh, why pizza? It says, page six exclusively reported last week that Tua, real name, <laughs> Haley Welch, they're now just calling her Tua, uh, was making, oh my God. she made $30,000 for a gig. Like where she, like she making a lot of money going to like bars and different like clubs. Get that money during your 15 minutes. Yeah. So she's making all this money and eavesdroppers tell us she was sharing plans to spread her good fortune around. She said she was going to use the money to give back and that the focus of her generosity will be quote animals and giving pizza to the homeless. Okay. Well, all I can say about that is you better walk to uh, the polls and vote on that thing. Sorry. Yeah. I mean, what is this? It's so cr I thought I made a good, a good pun there. And Brad's just, I'm sorry. He's too concerned about the hawk. Too. He's like, I'm so worried about this girl's career trajectory. It's like a very fatherly, like he's really worried. Like this is something he like texts me about when we're not on the show. It's like a real concern of Brad. I think that, I'm it's like I'm also like gawking at the fact that this is how a person gets famous in our culture. It's crazy to me. Like a, I mean there are other ways to get famous also. This is kind of a freak situation. <laughs> but I mean like globally famous. Like like uh getting paid $30,000 to walk into a club is just bananas. It's for like a, a toss off like drunk joke, like a drunk body sex joke. I mean, if you're like in Tennessee or whatever, I guess, or some like, you know, weird Southern state, it's like, you don't get celebrities there. You get the hawk to a girl and that's it. Yeah. I mean, you know, how can anyone like make that much money off of her being there for that to be worth that's it? That's what I'm thinking. Like how many people are at this bar that you're paying this woman th 30 grand? A cover. Like, is she stripping? Like, I, I don't understand. I don't think she's like that. I don't think she's into that. I think she, uh, yeah. she seems like actually kind of like a down home like nice girl or whatever. Like I don't I spit on that thing. Except for yeah, she was joking, whatever. But uh yeah. She's never seen a dick. She was kidding. She's she uh wants to give pizza to the homeless. There's worse things to want to do. And like we should if we're gonna if we're gonna uh crucify people for being I'm not crucifying her. She's she seems nice. Yeah. I mean she's not greedy. She's getting all this good fortune coming her way for basically making it like one joke i would give pizza to the homeless that's a nice way to pay it forward uh unless they're like lactose intolerant which i guess yeah in which case you're poisoning that's them right. and that's a murder attempt all right what else is happening anything good uh let's see what the fuck this is dark brad madonna <laughs> Madonna's son david banda says that he's scavenging for food after moving out of his mother's house 
Later says mom is, quote, very supportive. So these are two conflicting statements, huh? Yeah, I mean, I think that's why I, I, I pulled this story because I was like, what is, you know, oh, I'm now seeing, yeah, I feel like I'm seeing a picture of him shirtless in a cowboy hat playing a guitar. Okay. All right. That's, I mean, that's nice. I, I feel like an, a person who actually couldn't feed themselves or like wasn't making money wouldn't use the word scavenging. Like they would say like, I'm hungry or to like, I can't afford food. I can't feed myself. But like scavenging well, feels like the kind of word that you use when you've like never actually had to be worried about where your next meal was coming from. Like, are you like in the forest? You're like, yeah. Yeah. Scavenging through finding berries. Like what the fuck? <laughs> David Banda candidly shared that he's been quote scavenging for food around New York city after moving out of his mother, Madonna's like, pizza rat? Like, what the fuck? ritzy upper East side apartment quote. He says, quote, it's lovely to experience being nine o'clock at night, me being hungry and realizing that I don't have enough money to get food and scavenging. He said on Instagram live, it's fun to be young. That is like the most rich kid shit I've ever heard in my fucking life. Like, he's like, wow, it's so fun to not be able to afford food. Like, motherfucker, you're cosplaying. Like, what the fuck? I mean, I'm actually kind of uh, admiring Madonna here because Banda, age 18, lives in the Bronx. Oh, yeah, letting her husband go or letting her kid go hungry. Well, that's, like, that's Banda, yeah, that's right. Banda, 18, lives in the Bronx and has been teaching guitar lessons for extra cash despite Madonna's estimated $850 million net worth. Uh, I mean, it's like, I think it, all this value of a dollar shit, man. If I had all that money, I'd be like, you never have to work a day in your life. Be a good person. Have fun. So I can see, uh, like, yeah, but I don't know, man. I feel like it can be bad for people to never have to like find their, their own way. Like at all. Like I if you teach them how to be a good person and, and that they're like very privileged, it might not be, they might give peace to the homeless. That's right. I mean, you can be super rich and a really good person. It's not like money is inherently evil, but I feel like it can fuck people up if they're like, like you just have a warp, oh, the, it you just have a warped sense of reality, right? If like your whole life, you're just like, everything's taken care of. Everything's fucking, I'm on a private jet. I'm in a fucking penthouse. Like I don't, it makes you weird. It makes you weird. So at least maybe she's trying to make him normal. That would be admirable in my view. Like, and by the way, yeah. he's 18. But it's like, you're Madonna. He's never going to be normal. <laughs> well, but that's right. But maybe she's like trying to salvage some normalcy. Cause like, I don't know. I get the sense like she. Hiding him from the press would be a better way to preserve normalcy. Right. Yeah. Like, like, don't let him talk. Well, he's on Instagram live. I mean, it's not like he's talking. Oh, I say, okay. I mean, who knows? I don't fucking know. But she, uh, I don't know. Maybe she. Who is the kid's dad? Who's his dad? Yeah. I think she adopted him. Oh, why is his last name Banda? Is that her last name? What the fuck is Madonna's last name? Chicone. Do you know that off the top of your head? Dude, I'm Gen X. I grew, I grew <laughs> up with this shit. What's her first name? Is it actually Madonna? I want to say Maria Chicone, but they like they call her Madonna. It's like Maria Chicone and then, yeah, I think she her nickname is Madonna. Or her stage. Her dad, I like got like stoned and in a like K hole reading about Madonna recently. And like her dad was like in the CIA or was a weapons manufacturer or something crazy like that. Did you know that? No, I didn't know that. Weird shit. I, uh, I listened to the audio. If you ever want to listen to something just like really trashy and like juicy, Always. her brother, I actually listened to this audio book. Uh, for, I don't even know why, but. It was like his memoir of his time with his sister Madonna. They are estranged. And he clearly had like maybe like a financial interest in knifing her because it would lead to more book sales. So you have to kind of take it with a grain of salt. But it was like eye opening. Doesn't paint her enough. It, oh, it's been a while since I read it. But I remember like finishing it and being like, wow, she's a piece of work. And like, you know, I don't like she's not a good person. That is not like. Yeah, that's the message of the book, essentially. But I do, right. I, I'm always a little leery. May or may not be true, yeah. but that's like what he's saying, basically. <laughs> he clearly was in I mean, he struggled with uh, addiction and who knows like what his situation is mental health wise and everything. It's like hard to know like how serious to take that stuff. But I think she, 
can be pretty intense, but I don't know. Seems like it. Seems like, I mean, you know, but her kids seem like they're pretty good kids. Like I, you know, her kids are not in trouble or like bad mouthing her or anything. Well, like maybe we'll find out later, but like, it seems like she's good mom. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I feel like it's kind of hard to tell like when somebody is or is not going to be a good mom unless it's like really fucking dead ass clear. But like sometimes people can be like insane celebrities and then focus so much on being a mom that they're actually okay. Well, Madonna, she lost her mother at a young age and that was like her primal wound, right? Like that's like the wound that like has basically colored her entire life. And so I think actually she takes motherhood very seriously because she grew up like at least after like what age 12 or whatever it was without a mom. Oh, that makes sense. So, you know, hopefully she is. I just, you know, she seems intense and and a little strange to me as most, most celebrities do, but like hopefully behind the scenes, she's just like a good mom. Yeah. I mean, I've never said anything like bad about her as a mom or from her kids or anything. So that's. And like, if you're super rich and like like these kids have to know like okay after mom dies like i'm gonna be fucking filthy rich like she's not yeah she's not gonna leave them high and dry and maybe she will but i doubt it she's like teaching a couple guitar lessons a week like yeah. just kind of be like all right here's like a little thing until i never have to worry about money again in my life and by the way good for her like make him go get a fucking job and like have to like live in a shitty apartment and like know what it's like to fucking like be a human being you know like at the very least, it will make him a more empathetic, like connected human being to know how like 99, so. how 99% of people live. Uh, I mean, he's out here being like, it is such a nice thing to not be able to afford food. So maybe he'll, <laughs> he'll grow a little bit. He's eight, he, And by the way, he's 18. So he, I feel yeah, he's a he, child, deserves, like, he deserves a pass for like not being like, yeah, perfect. He's on the Instagram live. He's 18. Like he doesn't know what he's yeah, saying. Exactly. Thank God. Thank God. I didn't have Instagram live when I was 18 or you would not be friends <laughs> with me. You'd be like, what? <laughs> I'd be dead. I'd be dead. To think. I mean, nobody would want anything to do with me. If you could see me at 18, but I mean, I basically had that at 18 and I uh, just rocketed myself to unemployable status. So, <laughs> And here you are on this show. And here I am <laughs> on a podcast. <laughs> welcome. Welcome. Uh, all right. What else is in the news? What's going on? Okay. Let's see. Other headline. Why fans think Venus Williams snubbed Prince Harry at the ESPY Awards in 2024. Brad, what are the ESPY Awards? Okay, I, I literally don't. Know. I know this. The ESPY Awards oh. are the sports Oscars. Okay, like, that exists. Like the sporting equivalent of the Oscars. I have actually been to this show like, what my, th- many times because yeah. my wife worked on the show for many years. So, oh yeah, I have been uh, to the ESPYS as a like you know sat, sat in the crowd, been back in the green room, and the whole thing because uh, like who's cele- what celebrities were at your table. Oh, it's not a table thing. It's not like the Golden Globes. It's more like you're sitting at the Oscars, like in the theater watching the award show. Oh, okay. But it's like, it is pretty crazy because like it's the, I think the most concentrated gathering of elite athletes all in one place at one time in the world. And The uh, Olympics? Um, maybe that would qualify, but this is a smaller space. So like you get back into that like little bar area, green room area and like, I've stood there and it's like, like Venus Williams, Serena Williams, like fucking LeBron James, you know, I've seen them all like standing there and just yeah. feeling so physically inconsequential. I'm, and then there's me like, just like fucking schlubby <laughs> white dude. Like they're all looking at me like, why are you here? <laughs> but, uh, I mean, I feel like they're probably all looking at you like, is that guy famous or do you think he's like a, is he like an entertainment lawyer or like a manager? Like what's like, what is his thing? Yeah, I think so. That's uh, that's what I think they think I am that I probably like work. Uh, You're just like, I'm her husband. I'm, that's I, it. I'm like a marketing guy for Nike or, you know, who knows? They probably just, <laughs> cause those kinds of people are crawling around back there. It's like the, it's a weird, I mean like, you know, sports is big money. So you see like the confluence of like the talent and then the people who are like the money people and the, you know, the shoe contracts and all that shit. And like, what's interesting too, is that a lot of these really, uh, you know, famous athletes who are uh, like, they can be super young, like just coming onto the scene, but yet they have a high. They usually are right. Like it's like you retire at like 30. Well, right. And so, but I mean, like there'll be young stars who are just kind of ascending, but they have like a pretty big public profile and there's a lot of excitement around them and you'll see them. And you're like, oh my God, you're like 21 years old. 
And, They're babies. And so I remember at one point, one of the years I was there, they were like, uh, like I'm in this backstage room and they have, you know, they have an open bar and they have like, so, you know, sp uh, sponsorship posters or, you know, like, let's say like, like Chevrolet will oh, sponsor. Right. So there'll be like Chevrolet banners or whatever. But one year there was, uh, there were like Nintendo or Xbox or whatever the fuck the video game thing is these days. They had like consoles set up in this bar area for like video games. Oh, it wasn't Nintendo. Yeah. Oh, that it was like Xbox or something. Those are the sports ones. Yeah. So they had all these consoles set up with, you know, with flat screens and like video games. These consoles were like swarmed by all these. It was basically, I was like, oh my God, they're children. And they were all like having yeah. fun playing video games and they just had signed like, you know, $80 million contracts or whatever right out of college. So good for the What are like the categories at the SVs like that people can win? Like, like best supporting football player? Like, like, it's like <laughs> best team, best play. It's a little bit convoluted, but it's like, you know. Yeah, that sounds convoluted. Best comeback, whatever. And then uh, what is the story that we're looking at here in this context? What? V oh, yeah, Venus Williams. What What did she do? She snubbed Prince. Why was Prince Harry even there? How? <laughs> what the fuck? I, I actually know this. Okay, please. Uh, Prince Harry at the 2024 ESPYs, he, he accepted the Pat Tillman Award for service. So every year they, because Pat Tillman was this football player who, after 9/11, quit being a like a you know a multi-million dollar football player and went and joined the uh, army, I think, to you know def oh, defend democracy. And then he got killed by uh, an American soldier actually by I accidentally shot at his unit and killed him. So it's like this tragedy in Iraq. He was in Afghanistan, but yeah, it's like that part okay. of that whole thing. And so they named an award for him, you know, the Pat Tillman award for service. And it's like every year at the ESPYs, they, they give this out. It's like an annual, right. And this year they get oh, because Harry was in the army or something, right? Well, but he started what are called the Invictus awards in Britain where there's like a, it's like a sports competition, sort of like the special Olympics, but for, for veterans of, you know, the military who have been disabled in the course of service. So it's a good thing. You know, like it's, it's a noble, like nice thing to do. And I think they gave him the award because of his work on uh, Invictus. I think that's what it was. I see. The Invictus games is what it's called. I see. But then why, why so did Venus Williams? Uh... So, Okay, let's see. So they were at the ESPYs. Uh, during Thursday ceremony, uh, Venus Williams sat down next to Harry and Meghan. And then he was called on stage to accept the award. And Meghan stood up and clapped for him when he went on stage to get the award. But I guess Venus didn't. I don't think this is it. But then later she was seen standing up with the rest. So like there was, it seems like there was a shot where... Megan stood up and Venus did it. And then later Venus did stand up. I don't. So it kind of seems like they're analyzing her moves like way too much. Yeah. Like who gives a shit if somebody gives a standing ovation or not? Like this is. Did everybody stand up besides her or was it just like, it, are they just pointing her out for no reason? Like it's like one of those, it's like the award show moment where everybody sort of naturally does stand up because it's like for service. It's like this special, and that's yeah. kind of the sad story about Pat Tillman. And so everyone, it's like one of those emotional moments in an award show or like, you know, it's a little contrived, but usually people do give a standing ovation, but I don't. And I mean, Venus did stand up. Like she's like she, the next shot she was standing. It seems they just like got a shot of her not standing and they were like, Oh, yeah, I don't care. Tisk, tisk. I, I don't think. I'm sure she is happy for Prince Harry. Yeah. I mean, who, like, who gives it? How could you have a problem with the Invictus Games? Like, you know. I mean, I, she clearly doesn't. And, like, it, even if she has a problem with Prince Harry, then she's probably right. I'm on her side. I don't know what it is, but I'm on her side. <laughs> you don't like, are, are you Are you anti-Prince Harry? No, I like Prince Harry, but I, I also like the Williams sisters. And I'm inclined to trust them, but I also don't think they have a problem with Prince Harry at all. <laughs> I have stood right next to Venus Williams and she's at this, and it was at this award show, you know, years ago, towered over me. I think she was wearing heels. Really? Well, she's like six foot one. She's taller than me, I think. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, I'm like 5'11", six foot, but she's tall. She's right there, but then you put her in heels and I mean, she was, I remember being like, oh my God. And like Serena too. I mean, Serena's not as tall, but like Serena is just such a powerful athlete. Statue-esque, oh just God. like. Yeah, like you're just like, okay, I'm uh, 
inferior human being like <laughs> yeah like we're basically like not the same species like you're like up here and i'm all the way down here but, I mean, all, but that's the thing all of these people that's what's so crazy is like these people who are at the espies these professional like world-class athletes they are all freaks they're all like winners yeah. of some weird genetic lottery and like so like the most freakish people on the planet and, and they're like, in a crowd and you're standing there next to all of them and re sounds scary yeah, right it is kind of scary <laughs> Like they could all just like beat the shit out of you in any given second and you would have like no recourse. You couldn't do anything. Yeah, like yeah. like, like there, there are men like 350 pounds who like if I had like a 10 yard head start could chase me down with ease and just like bludgeon me. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, oh yeah, absolutely. But, like if they like send you off into like the forest and they're like, okay, you can have like a five minute head start. Like they'd be killing you within five minutes. Have, like they yeah, I'd have no chance. These guys, no chance. these are like, that's the thing about uh, sports too, is that like the, I feel like uh, the workout regimens and the diet regimens and everything and the supplements and everything, it's all gotten so sophisticated that like, like 50 years ago, even, you know, like the athletes weren't nearly as impressive as they are now. No, we're near. It's so weird watching like the Olympics from back in the day. You're like, what the fuck? Like they're not doing anything that's like anywhere near as impressive as they're doing now. Like it's wild. Yeah. So it's fucking crazy. I'm glad it's a good experience, but I, I just think this story about Venus Williams, like they're, they're just, it's just clickbait. It's such bullshit. Yeah. They're just looking for, it's just like someone is like tired and needs to write an article. Like it's just, they're just like looking if that's your job like that's your job is just to like gin up bullshit like, yeah i feel like people criticize the williams sisters a lot for like weird little shit that they do and it's like just leave them alone like they might like who cares i i feel like every time i've seen the williams sisters speak they seem like the nicest people yeah they seem like nice good people like just I really don't think that Venus Williams would like publicly snub Prince Harry for no she's reason. She's like, I think she's, I mean, Venus, is, I mean, both of them, but like Venus, when you hear her talk, so soft spoken and sweet. I think she's, I think she's. Uh, yeah, she seems like a sweet person. Yeah, she's a good egg. I would be shocked if she wasn't. Uh, yeah. And like, man, their dad, he fucking knew something. I mean, they, from birth, he was like, they're going to be champions. And then they fucking were. <laughs> like, that's crazy. <laughs> like, I mean, he knew something and he like manifested something. That's he was like, I mean. you're going to be champions and I know it. And like, I'm forcing you to be champions. <laughs> but like also, but the thing is, is that like, they didn't then like, you know, get some heroin habit and like fucking rebel. No, like, they, they were like, yes, dad, we're going to be champions. Yeah. They're like, we are, we are champions, dad. And like, they seem to be on yeah. good terms with their dad. Like it, it worked out. Like it's just so yeah. wild to do. I mean, and to, I mean, it's one thing if like one of your kids turns out to be like a world-class athlete, but like just that. Oh my God, but both. Jesus. That's like. I mean, imagine being at like your local, like, I don't know, mom book circle. You're like the fucking talk of the town. You've got like two daughters who are just the most fucking famous athletes of all time. I always say if I had like a, you know, genie, like a, you know, lamp and I could make like wishes or whatever, I would love to be a world-class athlete for just a day, just to know what it feels like to be in one of those bodies. Like, like. If you had one wish, it would be to be a world class athlete for one day. Well, no, I'm saying the genie. I think you have three wishes if you have a genie lamp, right, or whatever. But I'm just infinite money, world peace, and infinite wishes. Three more wishes. Yeah, yeah. But I mean, I just think like imagine what it would be like to be Usain Bolt in his oh in God, his in yeah. his absolute prime. So like imagine like for a day, you get to be like that fast. And then you just get to spend the whole day just like running because the thing is, is, uh, I, I actually tweeted about this once, like as a joke, I think I was probably stoned, but I was like, imagine, cause I think I was watching Usain Bolt run and I've actually seen, uh, I remember back in the day when I was a kid, I saw like an Olympic trial, like a track and field event for the Olympics. And when you see it on TV, it's one thing when you see it in person and you watch like a hundred yard dash among world-class sprinters it's fucking bananas how fast they are like it i mean they're fucking freaks it's crazy it doesn't look human you know what i'm saying you're like what like yeah. they are blazing fast and usain bolt even in that crowd is like at his peak like so much faster than even the fastest like he's just an absolute unicorn and uh imagine like this this is what i was tweeting when i was uh in an altered state it was like, I feel like if you're like Usain Bolt or you're like somebody who's like really good at the long jump or like the high jump or whatever, 
like you should do shit with that talent like in public more often just to freak people out true. <laughs> like imagine being usain bolt and like going to like a shopping mall and then just like yeah. running at a dead sprint through the shopping mall <laughs> wouldn't that be i mean like my brother is um is a contortionist like a professional contortionist and like he does this sometimes and it is really fucking funny like just being and i don't think he even like always realizes when he's being funny because like he also just is constantly kind of stretching and doing stuff but like i've been in like like a mall and he'll like you know get his feet like in front of his head like this like and then he'll like crawl around and like people will be like holy fuck like oh my god like it is like really fucking funny to witness like people just see that out of nowhere they get really shocked it's like it, it's a truly shocking thing to see an athlete doing their athlete thing among normal people. Yeah, and like I, I just feel like you need to you need to like share that gift in a more public way. It just just for entertainment purposes or like somebody's like a really good long jumper. Like imagine just seeing somebody run at top speed and just like jump over like 10 cars or I don't know, you know, just take it public. I mean, take it to like the streets. Like fucking do the evil can evil thing. Yeah. Jump over some buses, do some crazy That's shit. That's what I'm saying. But entertain me. Yeah, I mean, like these people are so gifted, and yet the only time we ever really see them do this thing is once every four years at a Olympics. I mean, I've always felt like they should have just like a normal guy at the Olympics also doing the thing, so that we can see how impressive <laughs> the, the professionals are. Yeah. Like just having like a normal person try to do the gymnastics routine, and then we see the professional, and we have kind of a basis of comparison. They should get me out there for the hundred yard dash. You would see. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I want to see what a slow middle aged white man looks like next to these people. <laughs> No, put me on the high beam and then you'll see like how fucking impressive these gymnasts are. Break your fucking neck doing that stuff. Yeah, in two seconds. Um, all right, what else is happening in the world of uh, popular culture? Well, somebody named Bob Newhart died. And I'm going to assume that you know who that person is due to being an elderly senior citizen. Yeah, I fucking love Bob Newhart. Uh, who is Bob? Newhart? Well, when I this is kind of a Mira Learns episode. When I was growing up, what did you say? This is kind of what? This is kind of a Mira Learns episode. I mean, this this particular one, yeah. But I feel and the ESPYS, yeah. But I feel yeah. I feel like uh, Bob Newhart is a beloved comedian and actor. Who, when I was a child, there was a sitcom called Newhart, and uh, that was that's my generation. Like that's my knowledge of Bob Newhart. But he also. Hang on, I gotta look at his Wikipedia. He host did he like host anything? He hosted the Bob Newhart show for a minute. And then what is it? Hang on a second. Uh what was his there was another sitcom that he had. There was Newhart from eighty two to ninety, and then the Bob Newhart show from seventy two to seventy eight. Um, so I think he had two like hit shows in the seventies and eighties, and then like some comedy albums. He was a stand up too, but he is a uh, deadpan, super funny, super lovable. Like, honestly, Mira, I think you would like Bob Newhart if you got to know him. Well, and I don't like a lot of things. So that's, that's saying something. Yeah. Like the thing here, here's what's interesting about Bob New, uh, Bob Newhart dying. Uh, he lived to 94. So good long life. And he's one of those celebrity deaths where like nobody had a bad word to say. Right. And that's the best you can hope for is that when you croak, like nobody's like, oh, and he was kind of an asshole and he, you know, yeah. did X, Y, and Z, but whatever. I'm sorry for his family. <laughs> whatever people, <Yeah. laughs> whatever fucking like qualification. Just like that guy, like, yeah. you know, it's, I mean, I, uh, I don't have respect for the dead personally unless they deserve it. And it sounds like this guy deserves it. It sounds like a nice guy. I get superstitious usually when somebody dies, even if it's somebody who's like an unsavory character. I will refrain from sort of uh, disparaging them after they've died because mm -hmm. I feel like it might redound on me somehow. I'm like, I have, yeah. I have that like feeling, but you don't have that. No, I, um, I come from a long line of women who can't stop talking um, and who just say their opinions uh, in situations where perhaps they shouldn't. Um, and so I have a really hard time saying that, like, I wouldn't, like, piss on Henry Kissinger's grave because I absolutely would. This is the second episode. Like, this is the second episode in which you've talked about urin urinating yeah. on Henry. I should come up with, like, a whole list. Like, there's, like, a lot of people whose graves I would – I got to do a lot of grave pissing. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you know, I feel like some of these people – yeah, I think Henry Kissinger is, is a fucking piece of shit, so – I mean, it's on site when I see Henry Kissinger in hell. I'm going to fucking <laughs> fuck that guy up. Knuckle sandwich when I see him in hell. 
Uh, but Bob Newhart, I do not think you will see him in hell. I think Bob Newhart no. is uh, with the angels. He's a good man. I think, so too. I think too, like these sweet, like decent people who make their lives in comedy, making other human beings laugh. I have a special, there's a special place in my heart for people who do that. I think that that is not the worst thing you could do. It brings people joy. It's just like make people laugh and then die. Yeah. That's your job as yeah. a human being or, you know, one of your jobs. And, uh, yeah, they're making art that make people, that makes people happy. That's good. Give people a little relief. Yeah, truly. I mean, I think that like in terms of rich people and this is not universal, but generally the ones who like make art, that is like intended to make people like laugh and like experience joy tend to be like the least bad rich people. Like even comparing like, I don't know, Ariana Grande to Elon Musk, like at least she's entertaining. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I've heard that from people in uh, here in, in LA and who work in entertainment, that comedians are the, like of the different categories of entertainers, they tend to be the most mentally unstable and like difficult. Oh Yeah. But of course, I think that like not all of them. And I think, too, that uh, they're traumatized. I mean, all comedians are traumatized. That's what I was going to say. So like maybe they have they might be unstable and like difficult to work with or whatever. But they often also have like a lot of empathy because they've like suffered. And that's why they turned out to be comedians, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, speaking of uh, suffering and bringing relief to people, Travis Kelsey has a cop mustache now. He's got the yes. He's got his training camp mustache. Training camp, just so you know, Mira is starting. Yeah, what is it, please? Because everyone's like uh, been talking in the Swifty side about how he like went to an Eras tour show and it was like his last one before camp or whatever. I don't know what the fuck that training is. camp is. What happens before the NFL season proper starts, where they go and they they have practices essentially. Oh wait, did I watch an HBO documentary about this? Where like they're in training camp and like it like to, like people like are going to get picked or not and there's like it's kind of like the dallas cowboy cheerleaders but for football like they're That's, like doing yeah, it's called like, tryout kinda. it's called hard knocks is probably what you watched mm -hmm. and uh, yeah i think that the, so he's in training camp and a lot of times these guys will have like creative facial hair during training <laughs> camp but then they'll shave it for the start of the season yeah oh because they're like not on tv they're I like no it's just what like bro like football bros do or whatever they're trying to be like goofy men of the people and they're like oh look at my handlebar mustache and then just guys being dudes just, just guys i mean being dudes, it's right and he doesn't have a handlebar mustache it's like a 70s porn mustache um that's all right. kind of situation and like i do want to preface this by saying like I find Travis Kelsey attractive. I get what Taylor Swift sees in him. He's a handsome, gigantic man. He's funny. He's charming, whatever. Right. I don't dislike him. I have no issues with Travis Kelsey. This man has a horrific case of cop face. He's got like the cop phenotype in his fucking face. Like he just, <laughs> he shaves that mustache or he shaves that beard and gets some mustache. And it's just like cop, 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 cop. Like I like cannot unsee it. Like I, and again, like, I like Travis Kelsey. He does not count as a cop. He is not included in ACAB, but like he looks like a Wait, fucking cop. What is it? What, it, what is it? ACAB again? ACAP? ACAP? Come on, you can remember. You got this. Guess. All cops are bad. Hmm. Are bastards. Yeah, there you go. That's what it is. <laughs> oh, I, yeah. yeah. Mira and I have Mira, Mira and I have a long Mira and I have a longstanding debate about this. <laughs> I can't see things in black and white. As soon as you say all, I'm like, well, wait a minute. There's got to be at least all cops are bad. <laughs> one one cop out there has to be like a nice human being. I don't think they're all bastards. Yeah, and that cop is about to quit being a cop. They're part of a they're, really they're part of a that. corrupted system. That's the problem. They're all bastards. All cops are bastards. It includes the fucking puppy police or whatever that show is that probably your kids watch, and it includes I, a lot of people. Well, Travis Kelsey does. I think he does kind of look like I, I can see where he has like the cop vibe with his like. He has cop face. I'm I'm fascinated that he and uh, Taylor Swift are not engaged yet. I thought they would be engaged this summer. I mean, we've got a bet going, and for some reason, it is not a two way bet. It's just Brad gives me a hundred dollars if Taylor Swift is not married to Travis Kelsey and pregnant with his baby by 2026. I mean, it feels like they're headed. Everyone remember that. Do you think June do you th 2026? Do you think that uh, they're going to get married? Uh, it's possible, but part of me also feels like they're both so rich and there's like so much paperwork and crazy shit that would have to go with that, that it's like almost not even worth getting married. 
it's almost like, what's the point? If we're like, we're going to end up splitting our assets all crazy and it's going to be a whole situation, we might as well just stay together. Just, and not. just do a prenuptial agreement. Yeah, but like, imagine how long that would take to draft. Uh, I don't know if it'd take that long. If like, they both are so independently wealthy, they could just be like, you know what? I got my money, you got your money. Like, we'll yeah. meet somewhere in the middle. If we have kids, it'll be split this way. Like, uh, they, those their lawyers can figure that shit out. Yeah. I mean, they might get married. I don't know. I I don't think soon. I think it'll take, like, a while. But, like, I think that, like, Taylor will not have a baby herself. She'll definitely have a surrogate. She's got those eggs frozen in a big way. She does. Like, I, I mean, I assume so. It would be crazy if she didn't, like... It, it just like gives her the chance to have kids whenever she wants. I like would put money on it. Surrogacy is the new C-section. I feel like it's like the, yeah. it's like if you're, it's like outsourcing the physical discomfort of pregnancy to like a poor yeah. person, basically yeah, paying them like 30 grand to just like go through the trouble of carrying your child for you so that you can like preserve your body and your. It's something that like, I, I don't know what my opinion is on it yet. And I feel very like confused and conflicted by it. Cause like, imagine you're a surrogate and you get paid a hundred thousand dollars to have a baby even or more, which is not as much as surrogates generally get paid, but like say you were, and then you died in childbirth. Does your family have recourse? Like what, what happens there? Yeah. I don't know. I think, I think they probably have to sign like waivers or wait their life. Yeah. If something happens, there's no way that the, uh, that the, you know, the, what do you call them? The people who are using the surrogate, like the famous people, they're not going to have to yeah. pay some sort of settlement. It's just and like, what, what happens if it becomes a choice between the baby's life and the mother's life? I think it's gotta be the mother. It's gotta be the mother. I'm not, right? I'm, listen, like... I'm not doing, if I'm a surrogate, I'm not doing it. If they're like, yeah, we're going to, we're going to kill you and save the baby. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like fucking no. Yeah, no I, <laughs> like I'm out. And, and you know what, if I were, I mean, it would be really, that would suck. But if, if you're using a surrogate and there is some like really crazy situation, like where the life of the mother is in the balance, I think you have to, ugh, what a horrible thing to think about. Right. I mean, it's like you get into, it's like, it seems okay. But then you get into the details of it and it's like, oof, I don't know. Like it like it gets it gets weird. It gets weird and confusing. Yeah, I mean it's like, yeah. So it used to be like you'd have an elective C section where you basically just ordered your doctor to do a C section yeah. instead of just Which people still do. Yeah, but it's like that's like not really the way I mean, that's not the way nature intended it. And it's like but people could just be like, Yeah, that's what I want to like, you know, preserve my well, like the issue there, I think, is like a lot of women get C-sections and don't realize how bad it actually is and how it can actually be like worse than childbirth in a lot of ways. Cause it's major surgery. They have to be awake for Yeah, I've, like, I've sat to, I've, my, we've had one of each. We, we, know, did, like, we did the normal route and then my son was breach. It was like, a you know, it was an emergency. It was actually an emergency C-section, which is even oh, more wow. dramatic. So it was uh, it was intense you know, both of them were intense, like the, you know, for different reasons, but, uh, childbirth is crazy, but to like, I don't know. It's just like, listen to the doctor. I would rather give birth to a child than have like elective surgery while I'm awake. I think like, give me the drugs to give birth to the kid. So I don't feel it as bad. And like, I'll just do that instead. It seems better. Yeah. I, and I have friends who do, you know, the no drugs at all and like deal with all the pain. And like, they say that the high after the baby is born, after all that pain, like, the flood of whatever you get into your body is like, I don't believe you it. Know. <laughs> my mom had three kids at home. Um, she had me and my brother in an apartment and then my sister in a house in Mar Vista. My sister was a back birth. So not a breach, like a breach birth is like, like backwards. Like the, the head is not in the right spot, but my sister was just flipped around. So her back was facing uh -oh. uh, towards my mom's back, which it's not supposed to, it's supposed to be the other way. Oh boy. I'm pretty sure. Uh -huh. um, but she gave birth at home with a midwife and like I somehow slept through the whole thing but apparently she was just like screaming like the worst swear words ever and like threatening to divorce my stepdad they've been happily married for 25 years but like it was like at, like my mom talks about it and she's like you know like you forget kind of how bad childbirth is because you love the kids so much but it fucking sucks it hurts so fucking bad like it uh, is so hard I can't even imagine. so you're you're an epidural girl you're getting an epidural if you have a baby yeah, I'm like, I, my mom, my mom is so insane that when I was born, she had them set up a mirror so that she could see me coming out. 
Yeah, that's not that's not too abnormal. I mean, I watched my. It's you know, so it's, it, I don't want to see my vagina do that. That seems like I it like when they're taking my blood, it's fine, but I don't want to look at yeah, it. Yeah. That's my. It's like okay, I'll give birth, but like if I have to look at it, then it's gonna hurt more. <laughs> yeah, like I mean, the home birth thing, like you know, people can do it however they want to do it. It works out. You have a midwife, but like. My mom has begged me not to have a home birth. She's like, I like my home births. I had a great home birth, but like, I am too worried about you. Please go to a hospital. Yeah, like have a fucking team. I want to have like a medical. I've seen this shit. Like, what if you need an emergency C-section? I mean, you like drive to the hospital. It's crazy. But, you, but like, sometimes it's, you need, it's sometimes intense. there's not the time. You don't have enough time. Right. And like, you got to like get there. And then like, we had to wait for the OBGYN to like race across town to get there to do it. I mean, it was, it was intense, you know, but. That's intense. I mean, like I, it makes sense to have a midwife there, like in general, like in the hospital with you. Sure. sure. But like in the hospital with you. <laughs> we didn't have a midwife. I was the midwife. So you can, <laughs> can imagine how soothing it is to have me at your bedside. Oh my God. Your wife is probably like, I'm going to fucking kill you. Brad. You want to know when my daughter was born, we were in labor for a long time. It was like, you know, 26 hours, whatever it was, but she was in labor. You were, we had a baby next to her. We, <laughs> had a child uh but anyway no it, my wife always teases me and like kind of like uh because we were at cedars which is near the beverly center and like i was wearing chucks like those shoes and i was like standing up and that there's no place for the husband to like there's like a, a little yeah. couch you're just like oh i'm so uncomfortable yeah. so my back started to hurt and they were like yeah she's <laughs> she's not going to give birth for a while was basically the deal so i was like i'm gonna go you know take a walk i'll be right you know i'll be back and i went over to the beverly center and bought some running shoes and my, my wife was like, oh, oh, are you comfortable? Are you okay? Wouldn't want your back to hurt, you piece of shit. You fucker. Yeah, I'm like shopping at the Beverly Center, like trying on like, you know, New Balance or whatever the fuck it was. But Just hanging out, you know, go do some samples in Sephora and just, you know, chill. Yeah, yeah. I remember when your second kid was born, your son was born, you – like your wife, like her water broke in like some kind of spectacular manner. Both times, and both times, like both times it, it was spectacular. Oh, wow. But the second time was at the Grove. At the Grove, right. It was at the Grove. She, I remember you in the car on your way to the hospital texting me like, I'm in traffic and she's in labor right now. And her water just broke at the Grove. I don't know what the fuck to do. It was, yeah, it was wild. She had like, they had some nice man like wrapped her in blankets. I mean, she was like, a, it's, it's right. called a gross rupture. It's like when you're like... Most of the time when women's water breaks, it's like a little trickle. It's like, you know. Right. But, the, but her, like, hers broke like spectacularly was, from what I understand. And, and by the way, I should say this as a public service, that if that happens to you, get to the hospital uh, be, because or, like, all that amniotic fluid leaves the womb. And if there are contractions and that amniotic fluid is not in there, it can compromise the baby. Oh, um, that's, that's good to know. Yeah. So if know your that. water breaks spectacularly, like just, I mean, it's not like, you know, you, but operate on the side of caution and just go it. straight to the hospital, check in, let them take a look and make sure everything's cool. Damn. But, uh, both times her water broke spectacularly, huh? Yeah. I remember. Yeah. We were at this restaurant. It was called bread bar. I don't even think it's still there right by Cedars, like getting our last meal as they advised. And then it was like. I had to get a towel out of our car, oh, walk fuck. into the restaurant. Like, I'm so sorry. It was, a, it was a mess. Oh God, poor thing. Jesus. Yeah. That is, that's rough. Yeah. That's like, no, I mean, she was, I mean, you have to tell everyone, like I didn't pee my pants. Like it's like, I, it's not oh, that I swear. Beyond pee. I mean like the amount of fluid, <laughs> just, it's an explosive piss. Yeah, just just like... crazy. <laughs> um, how did we even get there? Travis Kelsey has a mustache and now we're talking about like amniotic fluid. Oh, because you're like obsessed with Taylor getting pregnant. Oh yeah, right. Yeah, oh, and surrogacy, the- surrogacy and that whole thing. But, uh, right. I could see her, I could see her outsourcing. She's a busy woman. She's running an empire. She doesn't have time to carry children. Uh, she's not going to carry children. There's no way. I wonder. It's going to ruin her body. I wonder who her surrogate will be. An anonymous woman who we will never, ever, ever know the name or identity yeah, you of. You have to sign an NDA. You're not going to be able to. Oh yeah, like the strictest NDA in the fucking world. That, like you are like. That's actually just... that's actually a really interesting, like potential novel or like movie is to to write a story about a surrogate who gets hired by like a high powered celebrity to carry their baby and like something, you know, that's a good, in, that's an interesting. It's really sci-fi kind of when you think about it, yeah, like it's... you can just pay for another womb for your baby to grow in. It's also like, yeah, it's also like really like culturally and like economically 
Like there's a lot going on there. It's like, that's a really, yeah. that's quite a thing to do for somebody else, like to carry a baby for them. And yet, I mean, who likes being pregnant? That's like, I mean, that's so crazy. Some people do. Some people, some people do. It's weird. And like, I think I've, you know, I've seen like interviews with surrogates on like YouTube or whatever, you know, some documentary type interview, journalistic type interview. And they're just like, they're really kind of sanguine about it. Like, yeah, you know, like yeah. this is what I do. This is my, how I make my living. And like, it's, I give people the gift of parenthood and, I mean, how many babies can you give birth to? Like, dude, my grandmother gave birth to nine babies between the age of like 30 and 42. You have nine uncles and aunts? Well, my mom is one of nine, yeah. Holy fuck. It's that Catholic Southern stuff, man. They did not use birth control. But she, she mean, was pregnant like, like, like a, every year, essentially, for like a decade and gave. That's fucking insane. Yeah. Jesus. Lots of babies. I mean, I have, I have 50 one cousins in mexico last time we counted so i guess mexican catholic is similar <laughs> yeah, they just produce they reproduce they don't and they don't use like birth control so it's like at least back in the day they didn't but um it's wild to think of being pregnant essentially for like a decade straight decade plus i mean it's like that's just your body it's like your body has a baby in it and that's that's what you you don't your body is not yours constantly you're renting it out constantly. Like that's like, and I guess it works for some people. I mean, I don't know. I'm maybe it'll work for Taylor. Maybe she wants that experience because some, you know, some women want the experience of carrying a child, right? Yeah. Maybe she wants that. She will feel like her life is incomplete if she doesn't know what that's like. And then, and then maybe. she'll do it once and be like, okay, surrogates from here on out. You know? <laughs> I mean, she's about a year away from a geriatric pregnancy. <sighs> Jesus. Uh, <laughs> All right. So congrats to Travis Kelsey on his mustache. Where else are, are we in the culture right now? Oh, it's Brad's favorite story. It's Alec Baldwin. Um, yeah. So Alec Baldwin shot a lady in the face. I don't know if you guys heard about that. <laughs> and the case was dismissed. Uh, because? So, okay. I, how much do you know about like why the case was dismissed? I, I think I have, I gleaned from reports and from social media that the prosecution like strategically and like, inappropriately withheld evidence from the defense in the, what's called the discovery phase of the trial. Yeah. And so basically they just like, they behaved, uh, you know, unethically as a prosecution. I believe it's a Brady violation, right? It's like when you don't, because the prosecution is legally bound to, if they find any evidence that could help the defense, they have to give it to the defense. And if you don't, I I might be wrong, but I think it's called a Brady violation. Um, and so what happened in this case, from what I understand, is that there was the shooting on the set of rest the stuff from the set was taken into evidence, the gun, the bullets, etc. Then several months later, way closer to the case, somebody, we don't know who, walks into a police station with like a plastic baggie of bullets. And it's like, these bullets are related to the rest case. And the cops are like, that's weird like that was months ago and like the case is like happening in trial right now and you're handing in this evidence that like is it even evidence and they looked at the bullets and they were like the bullets are different than the ones that were used on the rust set so that doesn't really make sense and so the cops filed it in like a a, a different case file more or less and it wasn't used by the prosecution or by the defense it wasn't entered into evidence at all and so like then that, when it was discovered, was what was used to say basically that the prosecution was withholding evidence. And therefore, it was a not only a mistrial, but, and I can't remember what the word is that the judge used, but there's some official term here. It's a mistrial and you can't retry it. It's She's like basically with, saying Alec with Baldwin prejudice. is innocent. With, with prejudice. Yeah. yeah, like Alec Baldwin is is innocent here because this guy went to a police station and gave them bullets in the middle of our trial and was like they're similar and then the judge looked at the bullets and was like i can see where they're similar case dismissed you can't try it again do you agree are you are you in favor of this because i'm like i'm pro i'm, I'm pro feel... i'm pro alec baldwin in this okay well i'm not pro alec baldwin in general but like i the issue that i have is the with prejudice part i think that it makes sense to dismiss it 
to this particular case is a mistrial because like there was an issue with evidence that could lead to like something like a Brady violation potentially. But it still is a trial. Like even if these bullets are from the set, it doesn't mean that the trial is done. It just means that like there was a mistrial. And so the fact that it's with prejudice feels strange because it's not like the case is solved. Yeah, I don't know the law well enough to know. It's like, it's, I'm sure. Well, so you don't have to do it with prejudice. Like she could just say this is a mistrial. Like, all right, we got a mistrial here, done. And then they could retry it in a way that like isn't a mistrial. But it's not going to happen. It's well, they can't because it's it's with prejudice. They're not allowed to. So, and so the with prejudice part is what's weird to me. But Alec Baldwin, the, the the end of the the result is that Alec Baldwin is free and clear of these charges. He is innocent, not because he uh, anything to do with the charges, but because of this weird piece of evidence. But I think. I mean, my view of it is that it was just a terrible fucking accident. And it was not like he wanted to hurt this woman. Involuntary manslaughter is what it feels like to me, right? Like, I don't think he meant to, but he did kill her. It's like running someone over in your car on accident. Yeah. But I mean, like, and I mean, like, was he behaving? I think the question is, like, was he responsible? And the answer is yes. Because there's been, like, historically cases like this where people are harmed on set or whatever happens and the producers are generally held liable because they're the ones who are like in charge of hiring the the arms people on set like the gun safety people all of these people and so if someone gets hurt it's kind of on production and alec baldwin was producing this movie but i feel like there should be like a civil case i don't feel like this is like put the man in jail for like yeah, he... yeah i mean that i i don't necessarily think he deserves to be in like prison but like you we now there can't even be a civil case but they can there's going to be a settlement Come on, there's going to be some money. No settlement. It's over. No, but that was the, that it's was a, that was a criminal trial. There's that, that's different. There's that you that doesn't mean that you can't have a civil suit and some sort of settlement reached out of court. Yeah, that, I mean it's that's definitely possible. And if I were Alec Baldwin, I would I would want to cut this guy's uh, widower or this woman's widower and her child a check. I would feel horrible. I cannot. I mean, if I had the money, if I were me, I would want to do that. But it seems like Alec Baldwin does not. <laughs> I would bet. Also, you maybe can't because that might be on some level admitting fault. I don't know. I feel like I would just be like, dude, I am so sorry. Your child's education and like life is paid for. I mean, same. Like I would, yeah, absolutely do that. If you had the money, I, if you had the money, you know. What do we think the deal is with this guy just like walking into a police station like months after the shooting in the middle of the trial being like, here's some bullets. I don't fucking know. What's that about? The whole about? fucking thing it just seems like a shit show. Yeah, like an absolute shit show. And I mean, like having guns on set is like a really big thing. It involves like everybody being like super aware of what's going on, knowing exactly where the weapons are at all time, like constantly having like in your walkie talkies, like making sure that it is like having multiple different people do checks on the weapons. Like it's wild that there could have been an active round in that gun. Like it is crazy that that happened. Yeah, uh, horrible. And uh, here's, you want to know that I'm going to confess something to you. You're going to make fun of me. When the news broke that Alec Baldwin's, uh, the case against Alec Baldwin had been dismissed with prejudice. It went viral on social media and the video, you know, of the courtroom was available. So all the whole thing was on video. And they show Alec Baldwin as the judge is dismissing the case. And he just like breaks down into tears. And then his wife, uh, Ilaria, Ilaria, <laughs> Ilaria. Ilaria uh, she breaks down in tears and then they are embracing. He's like hugging his lawyers and then they're, they're embracing while watching it. I got choked up. Oh my God, bro. <laughs> it was on a Friday. I'm an empathetic, I'm an empath. So like if I see somebody crying, I tend to get, if they're genuinely like, as a human being, I felt for them. I was like, oh my God, the relief. And like, the, like, cause I think of myself as a profoundly empathetic person who cries at the drop <laughs> of a hat at like, all, like literally anything. Like you show me two old people in love and I will be sobbing for the rest of the day. Like no problem. Right. Like show me like two dogs who are friends or like a dog who's friends with like a chicken. And like, I will cry for an hour. But like Alec Baldwin, you cried about Alec Baldwin? In the weirdest way. I like him. I think that like he's got his like really he's got an anger issues. But like even if you like him, like 
you're going to cr- like he's he would have been fine either way. <laughs> I don't know. I think like I think he's a human being and I think that this has been uh, He is a human being, that's true. <laughs> I, but I mean, I think to have shot somebody accidentally and then maybe feeling deep down like you have some culpability because of negligence, not because of like into like the guilt. Severe negligence, I would say. The guilt and the heartbreak and just the trauma. Imagine shooting somebody like by accident and watching them die. Yeah, horrific. I mean, he that has got to leave such a fucking mark on you. And then to be held up as like, oh, you murdered her, basically. And then you have all these babies. <laughs> He's had like a, like 10 babies in a decade or whatever. They, these kids are potentially going to be without their father. And he's up in age. So like, if he goes to prison... Was it a prison sentence that he was looking at? I think he's in a criminal trial for manslaughter. Oh, was it prison? I think that's... Dude, if you shoot somebody and you're held liable criminally... Voluntary manslaughter, though? Or whatever it is. you can. There's got to be... Listen, it's a felony that he was probably held yeah. up for. I would imagine there's a, like at least a couple years in jail if he's found guilty. And like, even if it's six months to be away from your family, you've got young kids. Like, I think on, and by the way, this was all happening. I can recall because I tweeted about it where I was like, I just started crying while watching the Alec Baldwin. I was like, it's been a long week. So this happened on a- Even with COVID, I don't think I would cry at the Alec Baldwin case. And I was crying at like everything. It happened at a, on a Friday. It was like end of the week. And I was just so tired. And I was just like, oh my God, these, and like- like the thing about Alec and Ilaria is that they poor little rich people. <laughs> listen, they are chaotic. Like <laughs> Ilaria, like co-opting uh, like an Hispanic identity is fucking inexcusable and batshit crazy. And yet, <laughs> I don't think these are mean, like hideous, cruel people. I think they're just okay. fucking crazy. And chaotic, and I think they're actually in love, and I think they have all these kids, and I think that. Yeah. And so there's like a part of me that's like, okay, like humanity's nuts. Like I'm not trying to excuse anything, but like, okay, let me ask you yeah. this. So like, I when I watch Real Housewives, for example, I love that show. I know it puts me to sleep at night. It's it's, but like I hate every woman on the show. They're all bad people. Like in real life, in reality, I can see that every single one of these women are like terrible, terrible people. But I watch the show and I'm like, Sonia Morgan, the like ex-wife of JP Morgan Chase lady or man is like completely fucking insane, has like 20 unpaid interns in her house doing God knows what, cleaning up after her shit, whatever. She's a bad person. Yeah, I love watching her and like I love her for being who she is on this show. Is that how you feel about Alec Baldwin? I mean, I guess I don't know him. Or is it like more fully positive? I think it's how I feel about people in general. I think that most people are fundamentally good and that we're all troubled. And that if you actually examine the record of my life or your life. You would find that we've all shot a woman in the face at some point. You would find that we've all (laughs) at some point held a gun to a woman's face. I'm Alec Baldwin. <laughs> now, I just like, you know, we all fucking transgress and I resist this tendency in our culture in the last, you know, especially decade plus to just absolutely curb stomp everyone for everything. It's like you kill one person and suddenly yes. everyone is all over you. <laughs> but the context matters. It's like he didn't like, he wasn't like in a rage and like, you know, if he was in one of his Alec Baldwin rages, that would be that'd be murder. That'd be. Different. I think he was acting a scene, or he was like rehearsing yeah, was. the scene, and like it was just like oh, and like he fucking you know. He what the most damning thing to me is that he fired, like the arms weapons, part of the crew before this happened. Yeah, so he owes money. I think he owes like a a lot a of money. civil penalty. Yeah. And so that feels fair to me. But like, I feel like. He, yeah, that does feel fair. I feel like he should pay a lot, a lot of money. And then just like, let him try to like, you know, whatever, get on with his life, and raise his family and like, you know, I don't know. Have his big Spanish wife, whatever. His face, but like, they just need to like, I don't know. I They need to like, make amends somehow. Like, I feel like Ilaria too needs to be like, listen, that was crazy. I'm so sorry. Maybe they'll become religious. Maybe. I feel they'll be like we found Jesus. They're gonna work. They're now. gonna do that. Uh, that's the last refuge of scoundrels, right? It's like patriotism and religion. Like, yeah, somebody starts finding like God. Spirituality, like it's like oh, like I had like an addiction and I I wasn't religious and now I am. Like it's like that that whole fucking thing. 
Yeah. So I don't know why I cried. I, the thing about it too, is that like, I think it was, I think it was genuine. That's the thing is I think the tears were like genuine human tears. I don't think it, for sure. Well, he's glad he didn't have to have a, but, yeah. but not for sure because he's an actor and like sometimes fucking actors maybe and he's not a very good actor though. Well, I think he's a good actor. Maybe he maybe he fooled me. Maybe it was performative. Maybe they were both like trying to play to the cameras. If it was, he's a better actor than I've given him credit for. Because like I watched it and I was like, oh, like just I could feel the relief coming off of him. And then they were hugging and it was like a relatable moment of like husband and wife just like sobbing and being like, thank God, like you're not gonna have to go to jail. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so fucking insane to cry at that. I'm, pro, I'm pro Alec Baldwin I, I, I find his I can see his humanity somehow and hers even though they're fucking crazy chaotic people imagine if I cried at like the Gwyneth Paltrow ski trial it's like it was just so emotional for me <laughs> like she won and he, that man was defeated yeah see I can't relate to her on a human maybe I could I, I nobody can nobody can she's an alien but, like, but yet I've heard like through the grapevine that she's delightful I've heard that like if you hang out with her, she's a fucking good time. Like, yeah, I think that usually it's somewhere in the middle. And I think like it's got to be very weird to have your life under a microscope in that way, especially when like things go sideways, you're getting a divorce. And then she's like, yeah, we're consciously uncoupling. And like I fucking rolled my eyes at that. But like she's trying to protect her kids and they're trying to say, hey, this is am yeah. amicable split. You know, she's entertaining. The thing I don't like is the out of touchness with like the average human being and how she's like trying to sell $600 yeah. t-shirts to like all of these. I do think she's like leaning into that in a way that can be kind of funny sometimes. Like she knows what she's doing at least that doesn't make it any better, but like, it's just a little much to be. Yeah. A little, <laughs> like, it's like, you know, just give, it's a lot much. Just give your money away. That's the thing. Like they don't get it. Like yeah, you don't have to do anything make else. Make your life a life of service. <laughs> yeah. Like find creative yeah. ways that fit what you like and are good at and go support those causes quietly. Yeah. And like like make your life about others who are less fortunate than you. And watch what happens. Like you'll be much happier and people will love you. <laughs> you know, like do what Dolly Parton does. Just quietly pay for the colleges of everybody in your hometown and give books to every child in America and like don't ask for credit. She gets it. She she yeah. gets it. She figured it out. You know, it's not even that complicated, you know, but I guess like Be like Kobe, you know, going and like looking at every fucking like girls sports team in America and paying for every single surgery for an injury for all these girls. Like do some shit like that. She's a saint, that Dolly Parton. She really is. She's a living saint. Yeah. Yeah, she really is. So, uh, what I guess it's was it time for Brad Learns? Is that where we're at? Oh, we're at Brad Learns, and our Brad Learns this week has a piece of listener feedback in it. Uh, oh. If you'd like to read that, Brad. But we have to listen to the theme song here right now. Oh yeah, we have to listen to the theme song. Brad Learns. <laughs> Um, so yeah, we heard from a listener named Oscar. He says, Hey guys, I've been enjoying your new pop culture series. I know that Mira is a big reality TV watcher and I, True. I liked your description of reality TV as quote girl sports. I'm currently watching love Island USA and I'm super interested in Mira's thoughts. If she is watching, this is the first season where I and the public probably agree that the USA season of uh, Love Island is juicier than the British one. And I'm curious if Mira has any thoughts on why this USA season is so good. Signed to Oscar. So, okay. By the way, by the way, I don't, I don't even know what Love Island is. I have no idea what any of it is. So this Brad learns is teaching Brad what Love Island yeah. is, which I also didn't know until I got COVID and then I binged like an entire season of it because I was sick in bed. Uh, Okay, so Love Island is a show that originated, I think, in either Australia or the UK, I'm not sure. Basically what they do is they take, it's so, it's so weird. It's such a fucking weird show. There's like no rules to it. So they take like a bunch of really hot young people, they bring them to Fiji, they put them in this villa, they call it. It's just like a big fancy house. They've got like twin beds lined up in one room where all of these people sleep. Basically, you have to couple up. So like they will do like coupling where it's like you like meet everyone on the island, you like play some games where you like make out with each other. Wait, and wait, then if you have you like it's compulsory? Yeah, like they're like on the island wearing 
bikinis the whole time, basically naked. It's like as close to like porn as you can get kind of with like a regular reality show. So like they're all making out with each, I mean, they're choosing to, you know, it'll be like a, it'll be like a challenge where it's like make out with like the person who you have wanted to make out with the whole time or like make out with the person who you think is like the the most buff or whatever fucking but what, but shit. But what if it's not uh, mutual? What if like one person's like, hey, I want to make out with you and the other person's like, ew. It never happens. So it's, it's... I think they must sign. This is the weird thing about Love Island to me is I watch the show and like, so like, okay, you're on the island. You're supposed to couple up. I guess the idea is that if you become single, you get eliminated from the island. But it doesn't always happen that way. Like sometimes people are like single for like two weeks and don't get eliminated. And other times like people like are single in a coupling and they get kicked off right away. Like sometimes it'll be like you have to, there'll be like two teams and like each team has to like choose a person to like get eliminated. So you have to like choose somebody like on the island to eliminate. But like there aren't any rules. Like it's just kind of like whatever. They'll eliminate people. They won't eliminate people. Like you just, I kept trying to understand what the fuck the rules are. And it took like half a season for me to understand there are no rules. Is everybody hot? Yes. Yeah. Everyone's really young and really hot. Okay. Yeah. See, I think that would be more interesting if it was just ordinary people on there. So like someone's well, like disgusting, would, like you're just like, ugh, like you're. So I watched a little bit of the season before this most recent one. And they did a really fucking hilarious thing where they had all like insanely just like the hottest people you've ever seen on the show. And one normal guy, just regular guy who like maybe hadn't even hooked up with a lot of girls before. His name was Bergy. He's got like the worst rosacea you've ever seen. He's just like a really fucking really average That's dude. That's what I'm talking about. And like literally episode one, it was like, okay, Bergy, you have to decide like amongst all of the boys who is going to get kicked out of the villa. And I swear to God, episode one, Bergie's like, I choose myself. I can't pick any of these guys. I feel too bad about it. And voted himself off in episode one. And then they like brought two single girls back on the show and then let Bergie back in for some reason. He's like, that's, a, but he's the Jesus Christ of Love Island. He's, he's, he was single for three quarters of the show and didn't get eliminated from the island. Did he, was he hooking up with girls? He like made out with a couple girls. And then this one girl came on the show and was like, Bergie, I like Bergie. And they had like a really nice relationship. Did he have? Did, did he have any? Was like, he? I mean, was he kind of like cute in a weird way or something? Or no? He was kind of like he's really awkward, and that was almost kind of charming. Where he'd be like, "I don't like. Can I? Can I kiss? Is that okay? Do you not? You don't have to kiss me. Like, is that? Uh, like he was like really, really awkward about it, which was kind of you. You're rooting for him as the viewer. You really want him to win because he's the only normal guy. And then this one hot girl gets on the show, and she likes him, and they have been together ever since years really it's one of the few like actual true love stories of love island usually they break up right I away i was not expecting this twist i know right uh, i like looked it up and i was like holy fuck berkey is still with taylor like damn oh. they've got a nice happy relationship I have to google this I, I i you know i've never seen it fiji sounds nice and then it's so fucking it's the weirdest fucking show it's so fucking weird like i so like i watched this season for the same reason a lot of people did i think because the host is from vanderpump rules is it Amer is it, is it the, you watched the usa the one that oscar was talking yeah. about yeah so i'm watching i watched season six the most recent love island usa the finale was last night actually um and i haven't watched the uk version yet so i can't say like exactly what the difference was between like early us versions and uk versions from what i understand if you're a love island fan like the uk version is like the one that you like first watch generally like that's like the the good shit right and i don't i maybe just because it originated there i don't know but like i have a friend who works at peacock but by, by, the, way, by has, the way why do i fucking hate that word don't i don't want to call something peacock I know it's I mean, fucking. Annoying. I like peacocks, but like it's like the network. Like, oh yeah, I'm gonna watch Peacock. It's just like, ugh. I don't like it. It's awful. Yeah. But he has access to like the Nielsen ratings of shows. Uh, Love Island US is like the most popular TV show on streaming right now by uh, exponentially. I mean, it is wild. Like they got the biggest the most usage that peacock has ever gotten in seven days was from love island season six Why? ever Why? 
I, I, it's kind of a mystery. My friend at Peacock also, because I asked him, like, how popular is Love Island? And he told me, sent me the ratings. And then he was like, do you have any insight as to why this season has become so much more popular? And, like, the only thing I can think, and this is how insane I am. I, like, looked into the IMDb cast, or the crew, rather, of each season of Love Island. And I found that there's this one lady who did the casting for season five of Love Island that had the regular looking guy in it, which is the last season and this season. And I think that the reason why this season blew up is because you got Vanderpump Rules viewers watching Love Island for the host because she was on Vanderpump Rules. And you got a casting director who was able to cast people who she knew Vanderpump Rules viewers would like and who were funny in similar ways. And you kind of like had a vibe that like, worked together as friends as opposed to like just being hot people is she like really cast it so that the girls were like on each other's side no matter what like you could hook up with any guy and it's like they would be like you are taking the like girls are friends like in this show and they're funnier than the dudes in a way that is like pretty rare for the show i think and like this casting director having the idea last season to just bring a normal looking guy on the show is actually genius and hilarious. And I think that like this casting director, if anyone who works in reality TV is watching or listening, like hire this lady. She also cast the last season of The Traitors, which was like the second most popular show besides Love Island. Like this woman is gold. Damn, that, that's, so, a, that, that, that's my analysis. That's a sophisticated take, Mira. I'm impressed. And Thank I want to say too, like on a related note or semi-related note, I uh, I just went through this hassle where I canceled Peacock. I didn't even know we had fucking Peacock. And I'm like <laughs> shouting down the stairs at my family. I'm like, Dude, who ordered Peacock? You know, like I got some bill and it was like, oh, we're going to auto renew. And I was like, auto renew? Like I've never used this shit in my life. Like who did this? And I was like, I thought my daughter did it or something. And it turns out we've been subscribed and paying for Peacock since like 2021. It's like eight bucks a month or whatever it is. So I cancel that. And then... uh I get this uh, this message from Amazon, and it was like, you know, thank you for your purchase of, you know, this documentary. Uh, it's, it's called like Getting to Know Japan, and it was like this multi part documentary that was like thirty seven dollars or something. You like get a little stoned and like order some weird no, shit. No, <laughs> because I don't get stoned because I can't handle it. But like, I was like, who the fuck bought Getting to Know Japan or whatever the, you know, whatever it's called. I forget the title. It was your daughter, wasn't it? So I'm like, no, I'm shouting. I'm like, guys, uh, who ordered Peacock? And they're like, nobody ordered Peacock. And I'm like, who ordered Peacock? That's such a dad way to yeah, say it. I'm like, who ordered the Peacock? And I, and then I was like, okay, so I'm canceling Peacock because nobody's even watching Peacock and we're paying for Peacock. And then I, uh, I was like, and who ordered Getting to Know Japan on Netflix or on Amazon Prime? And they're like, I swear to God, they're like, I swear to God, we did not like, why would we do that? Like we did not do that. So I get on Amazon and I'm like, okay, I got to get a refund. And then it's like, oh, you can't refund a digital product that you've downloaded. <laughs> like you da- like, and it's like, and then I looked at my, like the records of my Amazon prime account or whatever. And it was like, yeah. it was like yep, was like, you bought okay. it. So here's the thing. I go to bed relatively early. Cause I get up super early. I get in bed. I'm watching Netflix. Uh, this is in this like last month or whatever, when like the American political you know situation was like in total turmoil. Like Biden had the collapse of the debate. Everyone's like Trump's going to win. It's going to be the dictator and like all these you know all that shit. And so like I and I watch this shit anyway. But I'm on like Netflix trying to fall asleep, and I'm the old fucking middle aged bro who watches like those recolorized like World War II documentaries on. Oh my god! Where it's like that's like not even like old. That's just like boys. Like boys love World War Two. They've like I, it's just I don't know. It's I'm watching. Yeah, I'm watching like H- Hitler take Paris. Cool. Yeah, Hitler's taking Paris, and like <laughs> and you're like oh, I'm soothing myself uh, to yeah, sleep. Like, this is what's gonna happen. Like this is what's coming in our future. It's, yeah, I watch Real Housewives to go to sleep, and you watch like World War Two yeah. documentaries. It's like the Battle of the Bulge. You know, like men in like pure hell, just like like that seems way less healthy. Yeah. So, the, but the, I fall asleep. Like I fall asleep because it's just like some like British man like narrating this old footage like and then they interview like historians but so I have like this is how I fall asleep every night is I'm like some show is on I watch it for like five minutes and I'm out uh and I think what happened is that I fucking bought getting to know Japan 
in my fucking sleep. And the <laughs> only way that I could have done the only way the only way that I could have done it is by leaving Netflix because I bought it from Amazon Prime. I had to have exited Netflix and then just like was pushing the button on the fucking remote like willy nilly and like bought that documentary. See, what if I was just like, I've been logged into your account and I bought that. I mean, <laughs> just to bug with you. it would make more sense. I can't believe it. Yeah, it would. I was thinking to myself, like, did I somehow buy that? Am I on Brad's Amazon account? But like, I don't, think, I don't think anybody is except for my family. So I'm like, yeah, it's the only explanation. Have you ever done shit in your sleep before oh, like no, that? I'm not like asleep. No. I mean, knock on wood. I don't need that. I've got enough going on. I don't need to start like sleepwalking, but. That is so fucking weird. Is it like a World War II Japan thing? No. It's like, I mean, if it was Hiroshima, that would be more in my wheelhouse, like watching the uh, atom bombs drop and recolor <laughs> recolorized footage. Like, by the way, like, yeah, like, not only do I want to watch this awful shit, but I want to watch it like in color, you know, like, please show me. Colorized. Let me see the Nazis like take Paris in color. But I, I think. Have you seen the episode of Twin Peaks with the atom bomb? I recommend I it. I have to, you know, no, I don't think I have. No, you're too busy watching like Ken Burns, yeah. like fucking like World War II, or, like Adam fucking. What's I his meant name? to tell you this earlier when we were talking about childbirth. That uh, when my wife was in labor for 26 hours with my daughter, I Jesus. watched several episodes of Ken Burns' Civil War to soothe <laughs> me. But that fucking what was that guy's name? That Southern man who was like his name's like Percy or something. He was like a historian who had written about the region. I do not have the attention span for that shit. I, I grew up with the internet. And the, uh, the music is like all that beautiful, like Appalachian music that they play. But yeah, that was what I watched while my daughter was like in utero. That's so insane. I love some like really boring documentaries. Like if you show me like a, a, like a fashion documentary where they're like not talking about like labels, but they're talking about like pleats and dresses and shit like that. Like I will like the PBS shit. Like I will like watch that shit so carefully and be so into it but like war shit like it's boring and i don't like it it's like it, just idiot human beings just like it's just boring but, and horrible yeah. like oh great everyone's killing each other i all these men are fucking like horrible i, I think for me it's like i think for me like i'm, I'm like maybe if maybe it's, it's like some sort of like like exercise in futility and yet i keep going back to the well where i'm like maybe this episode I'm going to finally figure out why human beings do this to each other. Like, how does this <laughs> that's crazy that's watching real housewives? That's what I do too. I'm like, if I watch one more episode, I'm going to find out like why humanity is like, yeah, this. like the answer is in this episode. I know it. I know it. It's the battle of the bulge. I'm going to learn. I'm just going to learn in the five minutes before I fall asleep. <laughs> what's wrong with humanity. Yeah. And then I'm going to buy some like $40 fucking multi-part documentary about Japan in my, I'm like I find myself only being interested in it if it's like about an individual, like if it's like following like somebody through like their historical things, I can be into that. But if it's just like and then Japan, you know, got bombed by this and that, it's like I just like I tune out, I get bored. Yeah. I mean, that's why you fall asleep to it. It's all the same shit eventually, right? It's just war documentaries, but it is amazing how many fucking Nazi documentaries are on Netflix. Have you ever noticed this? There's a fucking lot. There's so fucking many. Why? Like, I want to know why. Is it just, they must, like you. they must do, yeah, because of me, people like me who are watching them to fall asleep at night. But I mean, it's for boys, you know, these documentaries. It's like, it's, it's another kind of boy reality TV for guys who don't love sports that much. Maybe <laughs> I love sports and Nazi documentaries, apparently, but. Those are your two main things for <laughs> documentaries. Watching like American, like essentially like the American equivalent of like gladiator, like sports, watching <laughs> football, these people just brutalizing one another for millions of dollars. I prefer the ones where they're like openly brutalizing each other. Like, like, what is it? Like MMA? I, I like watch some MMA and got into I, it. That I like MMA, MMA makes together. me nauseated. Like watching that. I can't, I can't deal. It's too much. I feel better about it than watching football. I'm like, okay, at least I know what's going on here. They're fucking fighting to the death. Yeah. All right. Yeah. It's <laughs> so brutal. Well, Mira, I'm glad speaking of uh, death, I'm glad you're alive and that yeah. you made it through your bout with COVID and you got to feel it. Like, it's always like nice to get on the other side of an illness and to realize that you can heal it's like it's invigorating in a weird way to be like, okay, I'm going to get better. I'm going to feel like myself again. And yeah, I'm not going to die. Yeah, I'm not going to die. And now that you've had COVID, you're sort of like invincible for a little while with your antibodies. So you can just like go like, Am I? That's good. you can go like, <laughs> you know, 
out in public and be, be in big crowds and not have to worry for like at least like a few couple of months. I mean, it's wild that I didn't get it until now, but I guess I've been pretty safe. Yeah, I mean, you know, my I'm the only person in my household, knock on wood, who's gotten it. Uh, and I've only had it once, and then my wife and kids have luckily avoided it. But, you know, yeah, knock, knock on, wood. on wood. So anyway, we're back in action. It's good to see you. It's good to talk with you. And we will talk again next week. Bye-bye.